All right, first things first, let's get this straight. Not all seed oil is bad to cook with. Not all seed oils are bad to use. What we're talking about bad seed oils, we're really addressing an omega-6 short-chain fatty acid called linoleic acid. Now, linoleic acid is the primary fat, even though it's called an acid, it's a fat, in a great number of seed oils. And what we've learned through the years is that even though linoleic acid is an essential fatty acid, that means we have to have it in our diet, we don't manufacture it, and believe it or not, it's an important component of our mitochondria and our cell wall. We have to have some. Unfortunately, we don't need much. And it's the excess of linoleic acid in our diet that has been attributed to a lot of mischief. Now, one of the things we now know is that linoleic acid is converted into what are called aldehydes. Now, aldehydes are compounds that, among other things, stiffen our blood vessels, stiffen our cell membranes, and many people have heard about formaldehyde, which is an aldehyde. And what is formaldehyde? It's embalming fluid. And having worked with formaldehyde for most of my life, formaldehyde makes tissues stiff. So the last thing you want is to use oils that stiffen your tissues. So every time you use these sorts of vegetable oils, you're embalming yourself. Sound like a good idea? So many seed oils are really bad for you. Now, corn oil. Corn oil is loaded with linoleic acid. Now, many people hear the word canola oil, and they think, I don't know why, that canola oil is corn oil. Now, it may be because one of the major brands of corn oil that was very popular is called Mazzola oil. And a lot of my patients, a lot of you on uh, my websites, think when I'm saying canola oil is pretty safe, you think I'm saying Mazzola, and nothing could be further from the truth. It turns out that organic canola oil has actually a great deal of a very friendly omega-3 fat called linolenic acid. It does have some linoleic acid, but the ratio is actually fantastic. Now, the problem with canola oil and why it's been off of my list up until the last book is that most canola oil is sprayed with Roundup, glyphosate. But we now are finding small producers of organic canola oil, and it's, it's perfectly safe. It's not my number one oil, but you're okay to use organic canola oil. It's not Mazzola corn oil. Now, grapeseed oil. Let's be clear about this. Grape seed extract are polyphenols that are taken from grape seeds and grape skin. And they have some amazing health-promoting qualities. But grape seed oil that's pressed out of the grape seed has none of those benefits. And it's mostly that omega-6 fat linoleic acid. Now, Someone wrote in that long ago, grapeseed oil was safe on my list, and quite frankly, I think it was uh, in my original book, Dr. Gundry's Diet Evolution. And if you've been following my career, you know that when I learn something that's important for you to know, I will change my stance. And there's a lot of docs out there who, regardless of the information, regardless of the studies, they will never change their stance. So, grapeseed oil is not friendly to you, and I do not recommend it. Same with cottonseed oil. 
Now, how about peanut oil? Peanut oil is used for deep fat frying, and it's very stable and it doesn't smoke. It's probably the worst for you. It turns out that peanut oil contains a peanut lectin. And there's very good studies on multiple monkey species who are given peanut oil with and without the lectin. The monkeys who were given peanut oil with the lectin developed atherosclerosis. And quite frankly, monkeys don't get atherosclerosis. But these did, giving them peanut oil. When they gave them the peanut oil without the lectin, the lectin was removed, they didn't develop atherosclerosis. You'll learn in my new book the mechanism that how this happened. The lectin actually attached to the inside surface of their blood vessels, and they attacked their blood vessels. So keep it away from you. Peanut oils in lots of foods, especially fast foods, because they use it for deep fat frying, so beware. Safflower oil. Now, Safflower oil is also very heavy in omega-6 fats. Recently, safflower oil has been genetically bred to have more oleic acid, which is the monounsaturated fat in olive oil. But buyer beware, just because there's more oleic acid than normal, safflower oil and sunflower oil still is predominantly that omega-6 polyunsaturated fat that we're warning against. So don't be confused. Just be, you, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Soy oil. Soybean oil is loaded with lectins, and the vast majority of soy in this country is sprayed with glyphosate. And that glyphosate Roundup will be present in the oil. Same with sunflower oil. Same issue. Now, You'll see sometimes sunflower lecithin in supplements. Sunflower lecithin is not sunflower oil. It's an emollient that sometimes we have to use to make something stick together. It is not a huge contributor to much of anything. So what are the oils that you can cook with? Well, sesame oil, non-toasted sesame oil is great. My personal favorite is perilla oil. Perilla oil is the oil of Korea and much of China. Perilla oil is almost all alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, and the health benefits of ALA are just spectacular. Non-GMO canola oil is great. You can't cook with flaxseed oil, but flaxseed oil is also loaded with ALA. Now, is it important for a smoke point for choosing an oil? Not at all. Olive oil has a low smoke point, but in fact, olive oil is the least oxidizable oil that you can cook with. And so smoke point is not a deal in choosing an oil. And just because an oil is smoking doesn't mean that it's oxidizing. Oxidized oil is a rancid oil, and that's the problem. Now, Remember, if you're looking at an ingredient, you're looking at the oil and the oil content, most likely the package you're looking at is a highly processed food with ground up grains or even ground up lectin free products that are being cooked in that oil. What's Worrisome is, oh, you may say, oh, this is done with olive oil, or oh, this is done with avocado oil, and so that's safe. But look at the total carbohydrates in that package. I see many wise consumers who look at the oil and say, oh, that's good oil, that's uh, coconut oil, or that's, um, that's uh, olive oil, or that's avocado oil, and that's good for me without reading the carbohydrate content. And they're eating a very high carbohydrate food while looking at the oil. And that's not the problem for most of us. Finally, if you're eating a processed or ultra processed foods, the odds are you're eating a terrible oil that is omega-6 that's gonna to contribute to inflammation and quite frankly is going to embalm you slowly and that's not what you want.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure you check this one out too. Brazil nuts are great source of selenium, but you can absolutely overdo it. And we've actually seen people get selenium poisoning.